Excellent. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, uh, this is the Select Committee to, stu to Study Barriers to Survey on Seaboards and Commissions. Today is November 8, 2022, and this meeting is starting on time at 7.32. Um, we're going to call the meeting to order. Beth, can we do a roll call? Javier? Here. Jamila? Here. Uh, Mara? Susan? Here. Gwen? Garrick? Here. Cynthia? Here. And Jenna? Here. So we're just missing Gwen at the moment. Okay. So, habemos quorum. Um, this meeting, it's been video and audio recorded and it's being held over Zoom. Um, we're going to start, we're going to go uh, right now to the second agenda item, which is public comment. We have 15 minutes every time, every meeting that we have, we have allocated 15 minutes for public comment. So we're going to wait a little bit, see if somebody comes in interested <laughs> in doing <laughs> And right after that, we're going to jump into um, conversation with Megan Pike, chair of the Human Rights Commission. Um, we're going to wait a little bit, just in case people, you know, probably people are saying, you know, they never start on time. So, <laughs> and they may be true, but um, so let's just wait. Or they're glued to their television sets. <laughs> <laughs> right. Excellent. Having uh, waited and looks like we don't have anybody for public comment, we're going to move to the next agenda item, which is, again, conversation with Dan Pike, chair of the Human Rights Commission. Megan, it's really, really good having you here. Hello, everyone. And um, again, my name is Megan Peck. It's not uh, pronounced like it's spelled. Um, I'm from the Human Rights Mission. I was here last week, um, and I've met most of you. Um, you know that Susan's one of our HRC members. Um, we really appreciate her involvement with your committee, and she's been updating us every um, at our monthly meetings, too, about your work. So. Um, I don't want to repeat too much of what I said last week in public comment. How much time do I have today? Uh, a fair amount of time. I would say at least 15, 20 minutes. Okay, great. Um, so um, we, um, the HRC over the summer uh, formed a subcommittee to uh, draft a uh, handbook um, for new commissioners and committee members. Um, that we hope can be adapted to all the standing boards and commissions. Um, I was not able to share it last week, but I'm here to do so today. Um, it is, um, as far as we know, there is no uh, formalized um, onboarding procedures for um, any of the volunteer uh, boards and commissions on the city, aside from the um, the OML training online and the swearing in by Pam Powers. Um, and so we really would like to have um, kind of a standardized um, a, a set of um, a accurate and consistent information about um, uh, what we should all be doing, um, the missions and the you know procedures and norms of our work. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share right now what is so far a four-page document. So right here, and um, it has been it has been shared with our the HRC in October, um, but I'm really looking forward to your feedback about any sort of. Um, uh, any sort of omissions or additions to this. Um, so I start here with um, our 
municipal government structure. Um, I've asked uh, the mayor's office if there exists a kind of a flow chart or an organizational chart um, that could help us visualize our, you know, our relationship to the, you know, legislative and executive branches. Um, one doesn't exist, but I'm hoping that um, if not someone on the HRC, then some other, someone else interested in, some other volunteer will be able to create this. Um, so I start with our, our form of government. And some of this language is very, much of the language here is, is a fairly boilerplate. Um, it is pulled from the city website um, and I've embedded um, hyperlinks in here. Let me know if I'm going too slowly or too quickly for you. Megan, can I just ask you, did you do this for the HRC or, or your thinking was to adapt it commission committee wide? Um, I, well, for both actually, um, okay. the reasons that we, we talked about last week. Yes. Um, so this is a part that is, I, I think is boilerplate and um, common to all the boards and commissions. The first page and half or so. Um, and again, this was these two, this was pulled from paperwork that I got from him upon my recent um, reinstatement. So, so these, these questions have come up, I think for many of, on, of the HRC members. Um, and, but I think this particular section might be particular to us. Um, we don't actually have a, a city staff liaison. So we operate a bit differently from the other boards and commissions. Um, we don't have that uh, staff support. So we, um, or I <laughs> create the agenda and minutes and, um, one thing I didn't write here, didn't include here, was also um, uh, request and schedule special speakers for our meetings. So, all right, so this is the second half of the second page. Um, here, I'm hoping to have all the committees have more information specific to themselves. Um, this is from the city website. Um, and this makes us different from many other human rights commissions, municipal ones. Third page, I have started the bios for our seven current members. <clears throat> um, Javier, did you want to ask a question of Megan? Yeah, Megan, can you go a little back to the to the previous page? Sure, page two. So, in, in, uh, at the beginning, I was going to ask what's the role of the Human Rights Commission after you you mm -hmm. went here. Um, so you said it's an advisory model by member body of the city. Who the, who do you advise? The mayor. And that is um, where that is may not be so clarified here, I believe. Well, we we are in somewhere it says we're the advisory body of, to the executive, I believe. Well, because there are some there, there are some as you know, there are some commissions that can be advisory to the city council mm -hmm. or can be joint advisory too. That's, mm -hmm. that's the reason what I'm asking. Right, right. I don't know if that's the case for the standing volunteer 
directors and commissions. So yours is is, a, is obviously formed out of the council um, and uh, is time limited, right? And, 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 I think I'm, and the reason why I'm asking is sometimes, and I love, I love this, the fact that you are being, I, I, I wish I would have this the first time that I served mm -hmm. uh, because I, uh, it's implicit that it's implicit, but not obvious that recommendations are no more nor less than recommendations. Mm -hmm. And whatever the recommendation is may happen and may not happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's imply and that plays a lot into the interest of somebody serving saying i'm going to put all this time for after that my recommendation you know not being used mm -hmm. or being used partially or or you know right and i and i think that's extremely useful mm -hmm. because we had been talking about people feeling that they don't serve they are not going to they don't want to serve for example that one of the reasons that jenna um when and Cynthia put in their, their question was like, you know, uh, not real impact was mm -hmm. one of those, mm -hmm. right? And I think that speaks really well to set that clear. And a lot of this, I do feel that my thinking should be a viable even before somebody applies, <laughs> like even before they get interviewed, like the expectations of like, you know, this is advisory, you, 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 whatever you guys, you come out as a member, maybe fuller or not and because i think that's a piece an important piece for people to say i'm willing to commit myself to x amount of hours each week to do this right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right right and um what i'm showing you here is very very skeletal it's going to tell towards you know dry and perfunctory um and um just you know it, it can be adapted for a lot of different commissions and i think it should be um what and all I have here is really what I think the minimum they they would want to know or need to know uh, post appointment. So some of what you're talking about is um, the sort of the the sort of um, training or that they would need to even be interested to to apply or to join a commission. Um, and that is actually not addressed here at all. But um, I, we should talk about that sometime too. Um, so if I may, I will just scroll through the rest of this. Um, so I was on page three, here we go. So um, a brief bio of each of the um, current members. Um, and then, a you know, short description of what, you know, how we conduct the meetings um, without going into any specific detail. Um, I don't actually think it's very easy to find the archive minutes. I don't even have a hyperlinked here. Um, along with how to contact us. So the fourth page is, um, you know, it's more dynamic. Um, and eventually I hope all of this will be hyperlinked um, or most of it will be. Um, so in a, at a glance, it shows you what it is we, we did, what we are doing, hope to do. And um, this list, you know, changes. Um, with the composition of our membership and um, political priorities, etc. So, does anyone have any media questions? I can go back to any section of it. Again, this is just the, you know, my best understanding of the status quo. Um, and I hope it will, it will go through many changes um, as your recommendations are come to light. 
Cynthia? Um, yeah, I was uh, noticing that um, I think there's a range of authority that councils and commissions have. I, I mean, I read in the paper today, the planning committee voted to secure this particular location for um, mixed income. Um, and so that's apparently there's a requirement to, to jump, jump through that hoop of planning committee for certain things. And I'm not sure if human rights um, mm -hmm. has that author has an authority, you know, and so, or, or, or some of the other councils and commissions. So it's probably good, I think, for a new member to know what the authority of the committee is, and it might be hidden up above there. Um, Megan, where I was talking about it, it's advisory capacity, or it's a, you know, mm -hmm. what, whatever the intention of the particular um, committee is. And um, I just wanted to ask you, is that term strong mayor form of government? Is that, that's just like a boilerplate term, huh? That's what they call it? Really, yes. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Yes. <laughs> but anyway, just a comment. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And that I think that's quite different from even our, um, some of our uh, surrounding municipalities, um, definitely Amherst. Well, Amherst, Amherst yeah. is a town. Or, yeah. Right. I mean, but, but for example, with Springfield, right? The Springfield, mm -hmm. and that was sort of, sort of the comment that I was going to make. So the first section, when you talk about this, the strong mayor for government has an elected mayor, that's any kind of city government mm -hmm. with a mayor, right? It's not just a strong. You have a weak mayor for a government, which is a good example with a Springfield, which at the end of the day, what makes a strong mayor or a weak mayor or a strong council or a weak council is the charter, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the, 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 the reading of the charter in Northampton actually in the, in the past couple of administration is that the council doesn't have the right to tell anybody what to do. In a Springfield, we have a council that, because of the charter, has the right to tell departments what to do, right? And that's that's sort of the, the way how you define a strong mayor or weak mayor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, do you have any suggestions about, do you want to incorporate that element? Jenna has a... Uh, Jenna has her hand up. Hi there. This is not about the strong mayor um, piece of this. I think this is a great document. And as you pointed out, I think a wonderful template for other boards to be able to kind of use and adapt fairly easily. So um, thank you to the HRC for taking the lead on this on behalf of everybody in the city. Um, I have a couple of comments. Um, one sort of relates back to what Javier said, and, and this may be outside of the scope. In fact, I think it is outside of the scope of what you're trying to do right now. But um, the last page where you talk about the sort of um, recent and potential topics of focus and activities, to me, this is so critical um, because reading the, the sort of broad description of what the different boards and commissions do, it's really hard to actually understand what that means. What, what, what's actually going to be happening in the meetings? Where do we have authority? What kinds of things might we be talking about? If I'm interested in or have expertise in X, Y, Z, does that or does that not match up with the work of the board? And so this to me really kind of gives uh, substance and meaning and meat to that rather um, uh, purposefully vague description. So I'm so glad that this is here. And I also wonder whether there might be a way to share this information with potential members, because I do think that that's one of the things that's sort of a, a gap in the way that we're recruiting members is that it's, as, again, it's very hard to read the, the general descriptions of boards and, and try to interpret, unless you've been to numerous meetings already, what that actually looks like in practice. So again, that may not be a question for you, Megan, so much as a question for, you know, this committee and all of us collectively. Um, well, I actually do agree with you. And we have a number of new commissioners who have, um, didn't have not attended meetings prior to being appointed. Um, and this is actually comes out of my own experience of 
having no onboarding whatsoever um, and really needing a lot of time before even, I mean, not just understanding what it is that we, that is within our priorities, but what we can actually do within the very broad mandate of, you know, promoting human rights um, in our city. So um, it, perhaps at some point, if this is you choose to add it to your recommendations and it is adopted by the city, we could um, link this to the web page, our individual web pages, um, just as general education for, for prospective volunteers. I think that would be great, personally. Um, so yeah, wonderful. Um, uh, my other comment, and I don't know whether you have any, you know, ideas or suggestions, but one of the things that we've been talking about is the role or lack thereof of um, not just onboarding, but training in, in getting members oriented to the work of the committee and um, helping to develop their expertise. And I think as we're looking to expand membership out to a broader um, kind of swath of the population, I think we also need to recognize that some people may be really interested in getting involved, but don't have expertise, specific professional expertise in the different areas of the boards. And so I think it would behoove all of us to think about, okay, how can we kind of onboard people, not just in the sort of logistics, like what we're looking at here, but in, okay, I want to understand more about this issue and I want to be able to contribute. What can I read? What trainings can I attend? What other areas, ways can I engage kind of in my free time to try to um, um, just sort of develop my, my uh, ability to contribute to the work of the board? So um, I know, for example, that on the, the planning board, there is a group called the citizen planners training collective that runs very low cost training for um, volunteer members of planning and zoning boards around the state um, on different aspects of planning and zoning law within Massachusetts. Um, I haven't had the pleasure of participating in any of those trainings yet, but I'm on their mailing list. And I wish somebody had told me about them, you know, when I first joined the planning board. So my question to you is, um, you know, are there any such, you know, trainings, readings, other things that you think new members could do to engage to um, just sort of more quickly get up to speed with the issues at hand? And might there be an opportunity to incorporate that in here? Mm -hmm. And I can only speak to, you know, uh, the HRC, and I would say there probably are not any sort of prerequisites that would be other than um, a commitment to, I hope, the commitment to coming every month um, as much as they're personally available. Um, and it's unlike the planning committee, um, planning board, um, or is it the housing partnership that has an, um, an associate membership that kind of um, kind of actually is part of their onboarding, I believe. Um, we don't, and this might be something that's, I, I think currently is outside of our purview because we don't have any input into the selection of, um, of candidates that uh, by the mayor's office. Um, so I was. Can I can I just clarify um, that my um, <laughs> my suggestion was not that not to think about prerequisites for joining the committee, but just whoever sort of shows up at the committee coming out of the mayor's office without your input. Um, whoever they might be, do you would you have suggestions for them? You know, if I were a new commissioner and came to you and said, you know, I really want to kind of be able to make a contribution as early as possible, what can I do outside of attending meetings that might help me kind of get up to speed more quickly? Um, so in that context, not a prerequisite, but just a kind of additional optional reading that mm -hmm. part of the syllabus. <laughs> Actually, um, we don't have a lot of work products. I mean, we do, we have um, hosted a couple of events, but um, in recent years, we um, 
we have done advocacy. Um, we've written some op-eds, but um, often it appears that we just spend 90 minutes discussing issues and human rights um, until we have, we're given, I mean, we are actually part of, we, it's possible that um, the council for the council and others to refer legislation for to us for review, but um, that has not happened. Um, it is, I guess, beyond um, some familiarity and um, commitment to uh, the articles and the human rights and and um, understanding our procedures. Um, I really don't. I really, I really don't. Um, and and you know, I guess once I once I um, hyperlink these topics, perhaps that would be where I could, you know, add this additional information. Is that what you're? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think, you know, even just, and again, it may be that, you know, for your particular board, given your work, and, and given how, as you said, how kind of broad your mandate is that there isn't a lot to do, but maybe a short section that just says, you know, recommendations um, for new members would be to read some of our past op-eds. Um, if there are any mm -hmm topics and our topics of focus, you know, current or upcoming that you don't feel like you're particularly well versed in, you know, do some research and here are some potential organizations or new sites where you might start, you know, even just a few sentences of, you know, ways to, to get informed, um, I think would be really helpful. And, you know, certainly there, I have a little bit of a sort of self-serving, uh, uh, purpose in mind by asking this, because I think having that in here, if this is going to be provided to other boards, other boards may have more concrete um, suggestions of, of things to do, trainings to attend, documents to read, and so forth. So, um, but I think that sounds like a great place to start. And Susan, who also is commissioner. Yeah, I, similar to that, I remember when I first joined the Human Rights Commission and I wrote about one of the um, resolutions that was on the website. So I know that there are some things that people can read about on the website that helps catch up to what we're doing and we offer insight before they join our committee. And I think putting some hyperlinks to those would be a great idea, as well as I know the op-eds that, you know, Ren had written previously before she left the committee and those kinds mm -hmm. of things have um, more of an idea of what we do. Okay. So we could just maybe make that a little more explicit here on this last page. Okay. Also, um, there, so the, the, there is a stark difference between a commission that has the charge of give technical and mm -hmm. specifically professional opinions in relationship to X, Y, and Z in the city, right? Mm -hmm. And the Human Rights Commission or this commission, right? So that's, um, I think it's a great idea to add that section because that's going to put either of those two kinds of, of commissions to have to actually to have a specific section uh, that is going to actually show because for me, it's not only that people are sort of going to learn a little bit of what they have been doing, but also that's going to show the direction of the committee, of the commission, what they do, how they do it. Um, I'm a little worried about, you know, uh, people having the time to sit and be able to read it. But uh, I, I, I'm going to sort of go back a little bit. When do you learn? that when there is a vacancy, when do you learn that there is a candidate? Um, we only, I, I only learn about it. I've only learned about this since I've been chair uh, this year. Um, and that is only if and when the mayor's office contacts us with the name. Um, and it's, um, the last correspondence I received was very, um, very minimal. It's just uh, the name of the person that has applied. 
um, and whether or not I had any opinion about that person. So um, I can't speak to what um, any previous chairs have experienced, um, but that is um, kind of the, that's as a level of involvement is expected of me, so. And as a, as a, so you had been chair for this year, right? Yes, I believe since officially since June, but I've been co-chairing for a while before that. Okay. So. So. As, as, so and 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 this is something, and I I think this speaks a lot to to the conversations that we were having. And you can you know I I would love to have your input and even more having in mind the creation of this document because I, and, and you can correct me at any point for me reading this document it speaks to how can i say this it speaks to the i read between lines that you your commission really wants to be in communication with people before they arrived before during and after right is that something correct to sort of to say that they're, you know, because they, as I said, I feel that there is information here that people would need to know even before mm -hmm. they decide if they want to be part or not, before they get interviewed by, by somebody from the, from the council, right? Before mm -hmm. the mayor calls them, because that's including the last page, right? Which shows, you know, the workload. If it's a technical commission or not, it's a different workload. I don't know. Mm -hmm. what, I would I would love to hear your sort of opinion about that. No, absolutely. I I think it's a it's a formative and educational and a kind of essential, um, you know, to have this at least linked to the our, our public web page. Um, I um, we don't have any other way of promoting our our commission. Um, other than for word of mouth. And um, yeah, I think generally um, there's a lot of, uh, there's not a whole lot of understanding about what it is that we do, um, which um, is mostly promotional and educational in the city of Northampton. But I think these topics would actually interest people um, if they knew about it. And since we only meet, once a month um, online, it's really, you know, difficult to share this um, any other way. We're just kind of usually just, you know, sticking to our agendas. Um, so, yeah, I do. Um, I do hope that this, a lot of this information could be shared um, and, you know, very and adapted for um, whichever boards and commissions um, find it useful. But I don't know if they all have web pages on the city website. Oh, Cynthia? Um, Megan, would you like to be in a position where you play a more active role in the recruitment of members as you have meetings month to month and see where some of the gaps are and, and in your context throughout the community, do you feel comfortable saying, hey, why don't you put in an application to, to HRC? Um, for a long while, we've we had only five members um, and it was difficult to meet quorum. Um, and as Susan knows, uh, but um, I, I, another, Unstated priority for the Human Rights Commission is uh, really diversifying our membership um, by race, by gender, um, ethnic background. Um, you know all the all the ways we humans are different um, and should be representing the city. So um, yeah, if I did have, I think it would be helpful to have input. Um, into the candidates prior to their applications, but um, I really, I'm really unsure of. I think it's rather inconsistent how that how members might be recruited 
were invited into the commissions of lords. So, and I, you know, I'd be happy to share a lot more of this in the surveys to chairs. Um, I don't want to take up too much of your meeting time, but if there's any other questions I can answer about what's been drafted here, again, this is, um, you know, very open to, to changes. It's just the first draft. Um, a couple of other things I thought we could add to, to humanize this bit more is maybe a letter from the chair um, or an FAQ. Oh. Does anyone feel like there's any, any missing, um, anything missing from the first kind of the boilerplate sections? So, Megan, do you feel that if if we ask any member of your commission, they would say, okay, this is the, this is the sort of the amount of time that you need to spend on this. This is the amount of time that it takes the Human Rights Commission for somebody who is serving. Is that something that do you feel is clear or or not? Sorry, I'm not really understanding the question. This so, is um, let me rephrase this. So when when making time commitment, mm -hmm. not only make time commitment, but also there are commissions and committees that, for example, in this one, I'm expecting people to do things outside, mm -hmm. just the parameters of the one in an hour and a half that we do every two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. So I would, if if we were established commission and not a uh, you know a commission a temporary commission. If somebody asked me what's the workload, I would say, well, we not only meet an hour and a half every two weeks, we also are expected to do X, Y, and Z outside. Do you mm -hmm. feel that in the case of the Human Rights Commission, that could be sort of uh, written down mm -hmm. as part of this document? Um, I just, in my three plus years here, I feel like that might present as more of a barrier to new members. Um, there haven't been that many that, that have um, stayed on beyond the term of two years. Um, and um, so we haven't had, uh, currently we, I think we have two members who have served more than three years out of the seven. Um, and so there's a lot of, um, I guess, um, kind of renewing our ourselves and our agendas um, as people come on and leave. I don't know, um, and you'll have to ask Susan, who has um, demonstrated you know, a really high level commitment and has been more, much more in, very involved given her, her student status um, about um, the, the sort of commitment um, or the expectation to serve on the subcommittees, um, because that definitely would allow us to um, to become more visible and to um, become be more, I think, have more influence um, in the city. What do you think, Susan? Um, sorry, I. Got a little lost somewhere in there. Okay, so do you think it was? Um, do you think the HRC um, should have this sort of stated expectation that that members uh, do work between meetings, between the monthly meetings? Um, no, no, no. That was that was not the question. The question is that would be if this one, the one that we are now. Mm -hmm. This one, if somebody asked me, if we were not a commission that is gonna end in a couple of months. If we, we were established commission that just keeps going through the years, mm -hmm. if somebody asked me, and the, is this is the commission, I would have to say, it's not only the time commitment for an hour and a half, every two weeks, so we we are expected to, you know, to go to the community and actually talk to people. Mm -hmm. That's this. Mm -hmm. Now, in your Mm -hmm. Human Rights Commission dynamic and your own dynamic and your own process and your own meetings and your own thing. Do you feel that you can point out to the workload? And that it, it, it and if that's a yes, can be that 
added to this? No, I don't think so. Just okay. because of our um, our membership has been very not not that stable. Okay. In my time here, and um, people do come in with um, different expectations and understanding about about uh, what the commission's purpose is, and hopefully this will kind of get us on more of a same page, but. Um, I think it's, um, it's not something we can do currently. Okay. Yes. I mean, I'm in agreement. I think that especially because our commitment within the human rights commission, um, varies so widely. Some people, you know, like just coming to one meeting a month and other people, um, you know, like being on subcommittees and dedicating a lot more time. And so I think that if we set a standard, um, or, you know, at least a bare minimum that might not adequately reflect what you can do within the committee. Yeah, I mean, one th there are two things, right? One is the one that you say, you know, bare minimum, you have to show up. And after that, you, you can say, and you, you will have opportunities if you are willing to do it and engage more of serving in subcommittees of co-writing an op-ed or that's what I mean, right? Because I do strongly feel that people should be able to know and what they are getting into. Because the, the lack of understanding and what they are getting into, and not only about the basis and the understanding of the specific committee, but also in the time commitment, right? And 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 yeah, there is a, there is a difference between the expectation of it, which is sometimes pretty baseline, and the possibilities of people being able to, you would be able to lead a group in a conversation X, Y, and Z. You would be able to co-write something. That's sort of a, the opportunities while serving because are not mandatory, right? And I do feel that that can be stated. Okay. If Javier, you or other committee members have those suggestions, um, please do email me at this address here. Thank you so much, Megan. Is there any other question for Megan from the our Black Committee? Thank you again, Megan, for that for doing all that. Yes, thank you. Um, I, as we, um, I expect to discuss this with uh, the HRC commissioners, uh, at least until the end of the year. Um, at some point, would you like to have a finalized version of this? Or, okay. Absolutely. Review, all right. Absolutely. All right, and I'll be in touch about that. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, and probably tomorrow I'm gonna be looking for the yard signs, collecting early morning. <laughs> for people to know, I think there's, there's a couple of people here that, <laughs> that yeah. resonates. So, uh, yes. Wait, uh, Gary. Actually, all right. So, first of all, again, Megan, thank you for putting this together. I think this is excellent. Uh, this is something we all need. Um, and, and hearing from you, um, I'm thinking, because I am on the City Services Committee, um, and you reached out to me before about someone who came before me to interview. And now I'm thinking, would you enjoy, or do you think other chairs would enjoy having someone from city services reach out to the chair before they do interviews um, for, okay. for questioning or something? You know, I, I would certainly really embrace that involvement. I hope it doesn't um, create more work, <laughs> but generally these things do. Um, I think that would be helpful. Even just like um, you could, I think it's helpful to start the onboarding at the city services committee stage. Um, and it really depends on who the counselor is who, and that we have a number of members who said they actually haven't been contacted prior to 
I don't know if it's just because they weren't unable to be reached or um, it was some other reason, but um, they didn't get that introduction um, from the counselors. Um, but um, yeah, that would be that would be helpful. Thank you. Okay, I I, I would just say that I I thoroughly enjoy doing the interviews. It's a great chance to talk to people who are willing to commit themselves to service to the city. And so, uh, you know, I, I too think of these opportunities as, as ways to connect all the web together. So, um, cool, thank you. Thank you so much, Megan. Welcome. I will go off camera and try to listen to the <laughs> meeting if I can. Excellent, so we're gonna, move to our next agenda item and i just realized that i skipped one which is uh approval of minutes from previous meeting um i know there were some uh hold on i'm looking here uh but do you get the corrections that jenna sent um i did i am definitely gonna have to um listen to the the zoom recording to get some clarification on those things um and i haven't been able to get access to it um yet there's it seems that it, that the recording gets sent to the person who hosted the meeting which as you know has been several different people over yeah. time and they have the ability to share it but nobody shared them with me so i only have like the one that i've or the two that i've got and it's not for this October meeting. Um, plus, I still need some counseling to figure out how to post where those meeting where those uh, zoom recordings are supposed to be made public. Um, both uh, Jamila and Javier have asked where they can see them and, and I don't know yet. Um, I know where they could be seen when uh, pre zoom times, you know, before everything went remote. But I don't know. I know there are, there's a place, but we have not posted anything there yet. So yep. I need to gather them all from whoever has them and then post them somewhere. But in the meantime, I'm just going off my notes um, that I take during the meetings. And so um, several of Jenna's uh, questions, comments involve things that I can't answer. I mean, I've looked my notes over again and I can't answer them without reviewing the whole recording. Um, because that's the, you know, I take as good notes as I can, but I can't catch every word from everybody. Um, so, so what, so what about either if people have reviewed the minutes, then we, you know, we could approve them with potential amendments or maybe not, maybe I need to get this information. I'm not sure how that works actually. Yeah, I would, I would prefer to have the, the minutes amended and then approved okay which so we would and also we didn't get the minutes from last week right correct so that that would means that for the next meeting in two more weeks we are going to need the minutes from october 11 amended and the minutes from last week right yep is there any is any uh, objection to tabling uh, the minutes until we get a final version from October 11 minutes and uh, the first draft of the minutes from last week? Okay, no opposition to it. Excellent. So um, A21, we have two things that we need to talk today. The next one, it's... Uh, first it's gonna be jenna i i got your email i fully hearted agree with you so i i would appreciate if you sort of can lead that section with the using the document that you sent me but also we need to be thoughtful because we need at least 15 minutes to be able to talk to be able to be able to decide uh time how how much of an extension we're going to be using we're going to need to vote in that extension in this meeting. And um, and that one is going to go to the next city council meeting where 
myself, uh, Garrick, and Jamila are going to present the petition of the extension. Um, I was told by Jim that the three of us, so I'm not volunteering anybody, somebody else volunteered. <laughs> he says, well, you know, Consular Perry and Consular Gore are going to be there. So the three of you he say, okay. <laughs> So okay, Jenna, I'm gonna so I'm gonna give you from eight twenty three to uh eight forty five. Excellent. Okay. So um yeah, so at the last meeting, uh, I volunteered to go through the questions that various committee members had proposed for our survey for uh, chairs, members, and applicants of committees to try to kind of consolidate them. Um, and I sent a draft of that over to Javier earlier today, which I will now share with all of you. Um, yes, okay. Um, so uh, I'm just gonna try to kind of do this as quickly as I can, kind of high level changes that happened. The only thing that I changed materially to this early section was just a little note about how long the form would take to complete just for kind of expectation setting for folks. Um, and I also added a note here just to remind people that if not to choose one of these to get into the form if they are in fact none of these things. So if they haven't, if they're not serving, haven't served, haven't applied, this is not the form for them that we still want their input, but in a different venue. So that that's kind of stated right up front. Um, I then, I sort of separated out the questions into four sections. So let me just go through what they are briefly and then go back in more detail. So the first is about applying for a board. The second is about serving on a board, then the process of filling board vacancies and then some kind of general recommendations and comments. Um, and to me, that order uh, sort of A allows us to flow neatly, hopefully, through um, branching, depending on respondents and what sets of questions they should or shouldn't get, but also about a kind of logical progression of, okay, I first learned about this board, I applied, I went through that process, then I was appointed, then I served, then I became chair. That's a sort of trajectory that makes sense as opposed to having all the questions kind of scattered throughout. Um, so in each section, there's just a little note about who the questions apply to. So it's um, the section on applying is for everybody, chairs, members, and applicants. Um, again, I'm just gonna try to go through this super quickly. So how did you find out about the vacancy? What motivated you to apply? How strongly do you agree or disagree with these statements about the process? And then a kind of open-ended question about how to improve the process. Um, for applicants, they would bump from this section to the end. So they will end up with about six questions. Um, and the most questions that anybody would have is 15. Uh, the second section serving on a board is just for chairs and members. Um, how long total have you served on Northampton city boards and commissions? Choose your total cumulative years of service. So one of the things I put in my email today, I realized as I was working on this is that uh, many people, including I, almost everybody on this commission, perhaps everyone has served on more than one board um, and maybe kind of concurrently serving in this current time. And so when I thought about filling this out myself, I thought, well, should I fill it out, you know, with my just my planning board hat on or sort of with all of them? Um, how would I uh, compile the number of years of service? Um, uh, what, which experience or experiences should I talk about? Because it's not you know, my, my, how I found out about the vacancy for the planning board is different from how I found out about the vacancy on this commission and so forth. I would really welcome input on that. I'm not sure that it's an easily reconcilable issue. So this is the only question where I attempted to address it currently by just saying total cumulative years of service. So for me, I would add, you know, planning board plus select committee, even though two of those are happening simultaneously. Um, so again, serving on a board, how long have you served? What are the benefits of your service? What are the barriers or challenges to your service? 
Um, this is a new question that takes uh, other questions that other that um, had been previously separate and pulls them into one. Again, um, trying to just make it easier for people to respond and have fewer open-ended questions about um, kind of the experience of serving. Um, so, um, so previously there was a somebody had added a question: Do you feel valued and listened to? Have you received special training for your role on the board? Do you spend a lot of time about your on your board's work outside of your meetings and so forth? So I sort of turned all of those into question into statements that somebody could, you know, agree or disagree with um, in the style of other questions in the survey. Um, and both about the person's own service and about their kind of general feelings about the board in general, as well as this question uh, or this statement. Um, that board members should or shouldn't be compensated. Um, I also will just note that I moved some questions from the section for chairs into the section for members. Um, some of these are fall into that category because I felt like they were relevant to more than just chairs. The third section um, is about filling board vacancies just for chairs. Um, and when I say chairs, Again, going back to our conversation last time, that may also include co-chairs, um, but we think that those are the only folks who know about this if they know about it at all. Um, so a couple of open response questions. What is the process for filling vacancies? What would you be looking for as chair um, in a new member? Does the mayor's office consult with you? And much like was asked of Megan today, would you prefer that the uh, mayor's office consult with you more than they currently do. And then again, a kind of open-ended question about how could this process be improved? Um, and then finally, this last section, which everybody will get is just open-ended. Um, you know, how can we reduce barriers to service? And if you want to upload a longer testimony, please do so. I then wrote a little bit about just a kind of thank you message um, about the, um, you know, again, if you want to learn more or, you know, elaborate or whatever, here's reiterating information about our meetings. Um, I went back and forth about, I don't actually have the questions that a list of the questions we were planning on asking on demographics. Um, I understand not wanting to include that here. So because it will tie people's information to their responses, but I'm concerned that if we make it as a completely separate form, we're just not gonna get a demographic profile of our respondents, which itself is gonna skew the results. So I don't know um, how to um, maybe include it here, but make it optional and reiterate the, the a reminder that, you know, if people are really worried about not being tied to their response to that it's voluntary. Um, but I think it might, personally on balance, I think it would be easiest to have it all in one form and give people the chance to opt out rather than trying to then direct them to another form to complete in a different place. Um, so that's what I have. I tried to capture as much as I could while making it um, much shorter and reducing the number of open response questions. Um, so yeah, welcome uh, feedback and input. I know it's kind of a lot to look at on a screen, but that's what I've got. Can you talk a little bit uh, Google form versus JOT form? Oh yes. So um, I only had a little bit of time to look into this, but the way that branching seems to work in Google form is that you can only kind of do it once. Um, so I think, I think we could sort of budget in Google form, but I think we'd have to do it in reverse order here. Um, so it's manageable, but again, to me, there's a sort of logical flow to this that doing it in the reverse order would, would interrupt somewhat, um, without kind of getting too much into the technical details. Basically, I think we would have to start with the general responses, then move into, for the chair, it would start with general responses, then talk about vacancies, then talk about serving, and then talk about applying. So kind of backwards of, of yeah. how they actually went through the process. So it's doable, but as far as I can tell, you can only branch people once. So I think that's the only way we could do it. Jotform looks like you could do it 
multiple ways so that we could retain this order. Um, so I'm willing to look into that more if people are open to it. Um, but again, I didn't, I didn't have a ton of time to spend on that particular piece, but that was my first impression. And I guess I will just add that on the on the point of you know people who are serving on multiple boards, we could potentially include an opening statement that says something about that. You know, either tell people, you know, try to summarize your experience, talk about the most recent board you applied to, the one you feel most committed to. I mean, take your pick of kind of what we most want to know, or we can just leave it vague and people will respond how they respond. I mean, I think if I were to fill this out and I were not the one designing it, I would probably try to kind of summarize all of them and somewhere describe that that's what I was doing. Um, but again, it, without making it really complicated, I'm not sure, or asking people to fill it out three different times with their three different hats on, I, I'm, I'm not sure how to fix it. Cynthia? Yeah, Jenna, thank you so much. This was really great work, great thinking. And my question, um, I think it applies to what we were talking about last week, and you may have gone over it really quickly here, but I just want to confirm it. When you're when you're querying the member, someone who is on a board, do they have the opportunity to talk about their application process? Yes, everybody everybody will get this first set of questions. Okay, great, including great. chairs and members. Great. And then um, does the beginning of the form explain who we are and what we're doing? I just didn't see that. Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Good, good, perfect. And then um, uh, is there a place, I, know, I, I remember the question that you said, do you want to tell us anything else, but is there open-ended um, opportunities? Um, so the I believe that every section except one ends with an open ended question. So the okay. applying for a board, how can you improve the process? Um, filling board vacancies again, how can you improve the process? And then finally, you know, generally, how can we reduce barriers to service? And the final question is just if you have more to say, you can do so here. And it would be, of course, very easy to add another an open ended question to the this section about serving to say, you know, something to that effect. Um, just, you know, what would make your experience of serving better or something like that if if people felt like that was useful. Great, great. And do we have, a, I know we have it somewhere, but is there an N, you know, like what's the total number of members? I know we know have the total number of boards and commissions, but are we talking about a hundred people here, do you think? Does anyone know? Is, isn't it like 180? Okay. I think it's in the resolution. Hold on, I'll look. Yeah. Okay. Or or slots maybe. Um, yeah, it's possible to be 188. Okay, P uh, potential positions. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Jamil. And so we just don't know how many are vacant, how many are yeah. So it'll get just just for our tracking purposes to see when it's how it's coming in. You know, we hit 20 percent, we hit 30 percent. I don't even know what number is good, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I I like um, I like what you did here at, at, um, at a brief glance, obviously, <laughs> but I trust the work. Thank you. Thanks. Excellent. So, you know, this uh, at the end is sort of a a mix of what everybody did and this looks incredible is job form paid there's a free version and a paid version um and i think that is one thing uh that i will need to look into is if it i know some free survey products have a maximum number of respondents we certainly wouldn't want to have to turn people away so um i can i will try to look more into what um capacity it has um, in the free version. Okay. Excellent. Is there any comment in relationship to, to the content? I mean, it looks fantastic. <laughs> it's just literally. So is there any other comment in relation to content 
I mean, excited that we got to this point. How do people people feel about the demographics question? Um, because again, I, I believe, and Javier, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that um, one of the proposals that we'd been, or ideas we'd been floating around was to have that be an entirely separate form so that demographics weren't linked to responses. Um, yes, so the, so the demographics section was stuck under that context because we had the feeling that it was going to be, if, if we put it all together, it was going to look way too long. In the way how this is branched out, I don't think it's gonna go, look too long embedded within the main uh, form. So that's that's one thing. Cynthia? Yeah, I just, just a thought. I mean, I know the demographics are very, very important, but I also know our committee is not charged with solving world hunger. Um, and I think that it's the city's responsibility, and I'm, I'm already starting to make our list of recommendations for a final report, that when anyone comes on board to serve, that there should be a capturing of that individual's demographics so that when we go away, <laughs> there's an oversight to see uh, you know, what those demographics are. And if there's any hint of anyone feeling ostracized or isolated because we're asking for demographics, because their anonymity would be violated, that would concern me. So I just offer that. I, I, I totally agree. It would be wonderful if we could capture that. Um, but do, do we want to if, it, if we're sacrificing something else? And it's just, and I could go either way on this. I just wanted to raise that point. Cynthia, do you feel like if we sort of included demographics as a section, but um, uh, before the question stated up, you know, up front, this is entirely optional. And if you don't want your demographic information tied to your responses, feel free to skip it. Would that sort of satisfy your concerns? Yeah, definitely. And knowing that, you know, we may not get a true picture, right? by right. doing that. But I think the sacrifice of that is is better. I, I would be more interested in the goal of getting as many responses as we can with as few restrictions and, and sensitivities as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and then look at demographics as something that's embedded in the city structure in the future. But I think that's a, I think that's a great idea, Jenna. So maybe if if other people agree that that will allow us to sort of split the difference of if people are willing to share, we get a little bit of data. If they aren't, that's okay. We don't need it, and they can sort of protect their anonymity. Um, Javier, do you have a list of the demo? I know we've talked about some various demographic questions, and can you send that to me? You're muted. I have it, and I can send it to you. Great. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. So. Um, so, so we need to, well, Jenny's going to log into the job form. Hopefully we're going to be able to make it work that. And, but the content itself, it's as far as I'm concerned and please, um, uh, uh, members can make a comment. I think it's, we're pretty close to be done with the content of the form. Looks extremely clean. So it's an amalgamation of what everybody put together with sort of the genius of Jenna making a work <laughs> together, which is fantastic. Uh, I honestly, when I tried to go form it, was like after five minutes, every single thing looked just like the same. <laughs> so, and I like this. <laughs> Even it's, um, how it was, it's visually pleasing. Excellent. So I will send you, Jenna, the, the tour survey that we have in relationship to the general questions. Um, excellent. Is any other thing in relation to this? So we move to the conversation of extension request. I just have a logistics question. Once I have the demographics and can kind of get those into the document, 
Um, whether we're doing job form or Google form, do you want me to just go ahead and build it or can I get editing yes. access? Okay. No, Great. go ahead and build it because, because this is something that you're doing only by yourself. You can yeah. just do it. Okay. Cynthia. And then if we could put on the next agenda to talk about how that dis gets dis distributed and disseminated, yes. I don't know the best way of doing that. So just want to make sure we talk about that logistical piece. Yes. Excellent. Um, hold on, I lost the agenda. Here it is. Um, if we can do in two minutes, assignments, <laughs> updates, I will love that. Um, or we can we can table it for next meeting because I, Jenna, you have done it. I was going to say about work, but a lot of work. And um, and I think when we come out of this, uh, Gary and Cynthia will have way more actually to be able to, to plan for what we were talking. So I think we should table reports now and jump into the discussion about the extension. Is that okay with everybody? Excellent. Can I just ask, I have one small question. Yes. The event that Cynthia and Garrick are planning is called a listening session. You had a special term for it. Is listening session yeah. correct? It, it was, I was just throwing out options. Um, we either can do public comment or we can do something called a forum. forum. Right? Thank you. Yeah, so I don't think we'd say listening session. So the forum is really, um, an open meeting with a purpose and uh, it can be back and forth, Great. but it doesn't have to be. So we can construct it however the group would like it to be, yeah. Okay, I reference it in the document, that's why I'm asking. So I called it a listening session because I just couldn't remember. So I'm gonna replace that with public forum and it's, it's sort of a broad statement, like there might be another survey, there might be a forum, come to a meeting, so I think, That'll sort of cover our bases. Thank you. Unless, unless the city councilors that are present can tell me if there's another word that's used, you know, like when we're talking about Main Street or all these other forums. I, I think it's a forum. You're gonna call it whatever you want to call it. I think you're okay, right. cool. <laughs> Listening session. It's too touchy feely. <laughs> Just speak to listen. Okay. I don't know. Whatever. Thanks for asking, John. Okay. Me, Javier, Javier, did you just did, did we table um both B and C, the assignment updates and the discussion about outreach? Yeah. Being tabled? Yeah, because both makes more sense to have it with the final version of this. And as Cynthia said, when we have this next meeting, it's gonna again be on the on the agenda to talk about how this is sent out to the to the work, right? Excellent. So um, we talked a little bit last time about extension, and I, I, as far as I know, this conversation should be short and sweet. And we talk about a, a possible extension to uh, a, at least April, or not? Was it April? So um, I want to sort of open the conversation. Um, Whatever we decide, whatever we decide here, we're gonna vote, and I will draft uh, a, a request that is gonna be presented by me, Garrick, and Jamila on City Council. So I wanna open it. We were talking about towards the end of April. Somebody mentioned even May. Uh, I just wanna open the floor for for discussion. Jamila. When was um when what was the original date that we were supposed to have have it done by? You know? Uh as far as I know, it's at the end of November. Our uh, no, originally the report was supposed to be presented at October 20th. October 20th. We are over time. <laughs> well, no, oh, I forgot to raise my hand for the Barrett. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, I just wanted to to note that when we were charged with our our task, that Council President Nash and Council Vice President Foster made it explicit that they wanted us to take the amount of time we needed. So I don't feel like um, you know we have to worry if people are going to hem and haw about us needing more time. 
Um, you know, we are still in in the midst of a pandemic and, and whatnot. So um, I I personally welcome the extra time. You know, we're gonna we're gonna need to reach out to the community. Um, and, and who knows if just one forum or listening session will be enough. So I want to give us ample time to, you know, if we do something, maybe we could do a follow-up. So that that's my opinion. Thank you, Dr. And I would I would think the sequencing is um, yeah. uh, thank you. <laughs> I think the sequencing is getting the survey out. Uh, digesting those results, which kind of gives us a direction for the forum. So, um, so just thinking in terms of time, and plus we had those speed bumps in the beginning. So, like like Garrick, Councilor uh, Garrick was saying, Councilor Perry, otherwise known as Garrick, <laughs> was saying, um, I don't think there'd be such a problem asking for an extension. But I didn't realize that the report was due on October twentieth. So, wow. <laughs> Thanks for asking, Jamil. <laughs> In short, I support the extension. <laughs> Jimmy, no? I know um, at our last meeting, Gwen had thrown out the date of April 15th. I don't know how people feel about that. April 15th. Okay, so um, Jamila, do, do you want to make a motion? Sure, I, I make a motion to uh, extend until April 15th. To request an extension to to request an extension till April 15th. Looking for a second. Second. Cynthia, second. Beth. Javier, how do you feel about an extension to April 15th? Let me think about it. Yes. <laughs> Jamila? Yes. Uh, Mara, Susan? Susan had to go. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Uh, Garrick. Yes. Cynthia. Yes. Jenna. Yes. That's five yeses. Which at this point is unanimous. Uh, excellent. Sorry, I'm I'm getting a lot of text messaging with the results of the um, different races. Uh, excellent. So I'm gonna draft um, a letter, and I'm gonna share it with with uh, Jamila and Garrick. So we present it in the next city council meeting. And I already talked to Jim that he's gonna add us in the next city council meeting to the agenda, so we can we can do it. Um. Is there any other things uh, moving to new businesses? Uh, is there anything uh, that we need to talk besides what we have talked and also table for the next meeting? Jenna. Just on the topic of the extension, I think it was Cynthia last time who suggested we might present a timeline alongside the request for the extension. Um, I don't know whether that's happened and I agree with others that I don't I don't foresee the council saying nope you're shut down you know work is ceased but um just wanted an update on on that and whether we can present something not even necessarily a timeline but just uh for these initiatives we have in place and where we things see things going from here I think might might help keep the council informed yes yeah, so the idea of the the content of the letter would be where we are what's to come 
the, the sort of the presumed time that uh, for us to be able to receive uh, info, uh, the responses from the form, for us to be able to process that, plus the listening event, whatever you, people want to call it, and sort of specify that these are the things that this is these are the, these are the things that not necessarily the time and when they are going to happen, but this is what it's going to happen between now and April fifteenth by the time we're submitting the report. Is that okay? Excellent. Excellent. Any other comment? And uh, we'll get a copy of that letter, Javier, I'm going to assume. Yes. Um, I Beth, do you know when the next up? Ah, Jamila, oh, so I'm, I'm going to use their, their different hat. Councilor Perry and Councilor Gore, when are you having your next meeting? November 17. November 17. Uh, hold on, I'm adding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, um, so we're not meeting again until the 22nd. No, yeah, until the 22nd. So you will get a copy of the letter but it's just as uh, you're going to get it as a final draft in informational. That's the reason why I, because if we, if our me next meeting was before the city council meeting, we would have been able to workshop it, but because uh, it's not going to happen in that way, that's going to be the final version. Excellent. I think, this is it for today. 8.54. Enjoy the farm time. Five more minutes in, 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 your, in your night. Well, I'll make a motion to adjourn then. I second. Excellent. Javier? Yes. Jamila? Yes. Garrick? Yes. Cynthia? Yes. Jenna. Yes. It's a unanimous number five. Yeses. Excellent. Thanks, everybody, and see you next meeting. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night.